For once or for many times in our lives, we were considered a new employee. This means that our careers consist of series of boundary crossing and in each boundary crossing, a new employee is created with unique learning needs that must be met in order for that employee to move to high performance. The lesson on leadership and management through this video encourages us as future educational leaders to reflect on these questions. Hello classmates in EDLM 807 and to our professor Dr. Inero V. Ancha. I am Catherine Salazar and welcome to our humble Perfect Learn TV channel to present a model for developing employee work effectiveness in new roles and environments. This video lesson includes these subtopics. Kindly refer to the timestamp on the description below for easy access to each subtopic. Improving performance of new employees crossing organizational boundaries requires a fundamental redefinition of what a new employee is and a reconceptualization of new employee development. This means that a 15-year employee who advances to a new level of management is little different from a new hire from outside the company. On the other hand, the expected outputs of new employee development are an employee performing at a targeted level of performance and that employee staying with the organizational unit. This is the general model of new employee development. This taxonomy proposed a systematic attempt to extend the macro structures and develop a comprehensive guide to the learning tasks of new employee development. Each domain is further subdivided into three learning tasks for a total of 12 learning tasks. A basic assumption of this taxonomy and socialization in general is that organizations want employees who fit because generally greater fit leads to a higher initial performance and increased opportunities for success at work. Here is the analysis of the 12 learning tasks in the four domains of the general model of new employee development. In individual domain, firstly, attitudes. Identify personal values and attitudinal predispositions and identify success-related attitudes. For expectations, develop appropriate expectations and resolve frustrations due to expectation differences. And for breaking in, Become aware of the dynamics and importance of organizational entry and master the special skills and strategies required. On the second domain, which is people domain, for impression management, become aware of the role impressions play in establishing the organizational initial evaluation. Understand the impression management process learn what impression will be viewed most favorable and master skills and strategies necessary to manage impressions for relationships understand roles of relationships and the kinds of relationships build and maintain effective professional relationships and learn effective teamwork strategies and for supervisor be aware of the importance of supervisor-subordinate relationships. 
build skills needed to be an effective subordinate, and learn effective strategies. The third domain, which is organizational domain, includes organizational culture. Understand the elements and effect of organizational culture to performance. Become aware of the importance of fitting into the culture and acquire skills to learn the elements of culture that is not explicitly taught. For organizational savvy, be aware of the informal organization and success factors and acquire skills to use them effectively. Understand the appropriate means for getting results through the informal organizations. And for organizational rules, locate oneself in the larger perspective of the organization and learn appropriate expectations and activities, role limits and realities, and reconcile role conflicts and ambiguity. And the last domain, work task domain. For work savvy, understand and apply generic professional skills necessary to function in the job. Task knowledge, understand the basic tasks required on the job and ways to perform them successfully. And finally, knowledge skills and abilities. Identify and develop formal and informal learning skills necessary to perform the job. The 12 learning tasks can be accomplished through the following four different learning venues and interventions. The new employee development system therefore suggests that the 12 learning tasks and 4 interventions should be an integrated system to achieve new employee performance goals, and that the new employee development process is not conceptualized as a linear, but rather a cyclical process, where newcomers may cycle through learning tasks and learning events repeatedly. Using this model as a framework, education should assume responsibility for four key aspects of development for their graduates beyond the task-related knowledge currently provided. These key aspects are the following. And that's the model for developing employee work effectiveness in new roles and environments. I like to end this video by recalling our reflection question in the beginning of this tutorial. What have been some of the new employee entry and development issues you have faced? How can an organization implement a new employee development system? And what are the costs and benefits of the implementation of new employee development system to an organization? I would love to hear your answers on the comments. Thank you for watching.